the Indians had a passion for large numbers. And when I mean large numbers, I'm talking about the numbers that can approach infinity. I remember when I was a child or a teenager, the biggest number at that time was called a Google. So one Google was one with 100 zeros after it. So if we, if we wanted to express a Google in those days, we would have written one to the power and we raise it up a bit higher. So you can see, so you can see here that one to the power of 100 means that there's 100 zeros. And that 30, 40 years ago was our best concept of trying to understand the infinitely large, the infinities. So um, to give acknowledgement to the Indians that they would, they were able to tabulate all the powers of 10, 20, like the, the zeros that keep increasing as we go from millions, billions, trillions, quadrillions. That means that the power that it's raised to keeps increasing by one more zero. So I'm going to come to this, but I just want to first acknowledge um, the, a story about the Buddha. This is, a, this is actually a love story because this, this story that I'm going to give you comes from the Lalita Vistara. The Lalita Vistara was written about from 1, 1500 to 1000 BC. So this is the time of Buddha. So Buddha was 500 BC, so two and a half thousand years ago. But this sutra, sacred text, was written, let's say, about 1000 BC. And there was a story in there. This is a text that's sacred to the Buddhist, called the Mahayana Buddhist line. And there's a story about um, these greatest mathematicians and they want to win the hand of the most beautiful woman and her name is Gopa. Um, so, so Gopa is going to marry the, the greatest mathematician of the time. So Buddha is one of the contestants and so is another um, important character called Arjuna. So these two um, are rivaling for the hand of um, Gopa and the contest is, so the winner the winner to win her hand, they must name all the numerical ranks that are greater than 10 to the 7th power. So, if, so we know that a million, a million is 10 to the 6th because a million has 1 with 6 zero. So 10 to the power of 7 is also known as um, 10 million and that's called one crore. So I've been to India three times and you hear them talking about currency, about one crore. The most common one is called one luck. So one luxa is 10 to the five. So that's five zeros after one is 10,000. So I'm just going to recite some of these up to, um, up to about 10 to the power of 421. So in the contest, they, the winner, they only had to go up to 10 to the power of 53. So each one of these powers has a name. So this 10 to the power of 53 is called one Talakshana. So the contest was testing their memory ability to name all these increase in infinitudes. So um, I'll just go through the names. I just want you to appreciate the, the wit, the genius, the the, the like why why do they even want to know all these great numbers is it about the sums of the atoms in the universe we're not sure but i'll just go through these so we know that one ayuta was 10 to the power of nine we call that one billion then then the next pa i'm skipping a few because I, um well, actually i'll show it to you now so here's this here's the image of buddha and these are the names of the increasing powers of so here's a whole page of it. So it goes even further than this. So I just want you to appreciate that I've only, I've only taken this one, that one, that one. I've skipped a lot. I just want to show you that they were able to recite this. So one Ninahuta was 10 to the power of 35. One Bindu was 10 to the power of 49. That's 49 zeros after the one. One Atata was 10 to the 84th power. One Pundarika was 10 to the power of 112. We're getting into really big numbers here. And the, the biggest one, the one that had sort of like a critical limit, because now we're approaching infinity, because after 10 to the power of 421, the name was one Dva Jagaran Ishamani. After that 10 to the power of 421, they became infinities and infinities of infinity. So this was the ceiling limit. And then in the third century, 
in the third century, there was a reference. This is after the in AD now. There was a reference to um, one Bodhisattva. Now this was ten to the power of there's so many numbers, but the number up here has 38 digits. So I've given you some of the digits, but it keeps going on. There's actually 38 digits. So this number is like huge. And yeah, so I was, I'm fascinated myself because like in the Western world, we don't talk much more than a trillion. We know we might have about 50 trillion cells in our body. So scientists do want to know how many cells in the human constitution. We can kind of calculate that, but it's only a number in the trillions, which has got nine zeros. So this data here, two and a half thousand, three thousand years ago, why were the ancient scholars and spiritual beings of that time wanting to know the divisions of infinity? So I'm coming up to that. I just want to make a, a reference now, because we're, 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 what we're leading up to is the arrows pointing towards this thing called the infinity, which could be like the macrocosm. If, if we are here in a microcosm, we are striving to connect with something greater than ourselves. So I just want to make a connection here about Buddha and infinity. The, to me, from my research, I believe that the symbol for infinity has a lot to do with the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence, one, two, three, five, eight, goes forever. And as we keep dividing one, the preceding one into the successive one, like um, 89 into 144, we get close to this thing called 1.618. And it seems to go, that decimal, as we want to keep getting to fine tune the decimal, goes 1.618033988874. But it goes to infinity. And every, de and every decimal point, it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas here we're getting larger and larger and larger. So we need this, um, this decimal notation, base 10, is also connected to base 12 because the Fibonacci sequence has a repeating code based on 24 and 12. So, so when they drew the Buddha, Buddha was always drawn in a golden rectangle because that golden rectangle, which is 8 is to 13, is a reflection of the golden ratio. So there's one golden rectangle. Then his whole body here would have been connected in another golden rectangle. And the, and the this area here of the head would have also been another golden rectangle. So it was kind of like fractal. Fractal is when the inside is the same as the outside. So to you weren't allowed... I spent some time near Tibet. And when I met the artists who were drawing these tunkers on big fabrics... Um, I saw the books that these artists, because I'm a muralist myself, I was fascinated how they were drawing these sacred um, images of Buddha. They, they were saying essentially that you're not allowed to draw the Buddha unless it was in the perfected ratio of the golden ratio, because otherwise it's bad energy. If, if you didn't draw it properly, you can see here I've done a very rough sketch, so this is not allowed. It has to be perfected geometry. So the reason why I'm interested in this image, this icon of the Buddha, these three golden rectangles embedded, is that it's a connection that the human body is in golden rectangles to other greater celestial ratios. So the image that arises for me is that we are connected to the geometry of the torus because the torus can collapse and compress from the infinitely small, from the flat land circle, and it can emerge and grow into a three-dimensional, fourth-dimensional sphere. So this is the macrocosm b connecting to the center, which is the microcosms connecting to the macrocosm. So in a way, the, when we nest the torus within the torus within the torus, we can keep growing these forms self-similar, one within the other, the same shape to an infinity. So to express, so what that means is that if I was to take a torus and cut it in half, if, um, if I was to um, cut that torus in half, what you would see would be two circles. So I'll, just, I'll actually draw that. So I'll draw, here's a circle and there's a circle. So we are looking at, we are looking at the torus here, but this is the cross cut and it, what you're seeing is a figure eight. That's why if you are a, a metaphysical healer, your business card will often have the infinity symbol because infinity means that you're connected to the higher mysteries or to the toroidal knowledge. So I'm just going to express this torus, 
So if I have a center point here, this is the microcosm, the atom, and the torus is the fundamental shape. So there's the figure eight, the sleeping eight, but I'm going to keep expanding. We understand that the torus has a field, and it can, and it keeps expanding in the Fibonacci sequence. So as I keep expanding, I'm going 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. I'm obeying nature's numbers. I'm not just being radical. I'm just expanding in, in alignment with the, the mathematics of flowers and nature. So this is why we're obsessed with infinity. So that's just a diagram that is emanating from the Buddha field, which is why I put the five-pointed star on his chest here. So the five-pointed star is the symbol of every protein in our body and that this star, this energy that's in our human field keeps expanding like this torus, this infinity symbol. And, and that's why we ask the question, why were the ancient sadhus, the holy people, obsessed about reciting the powers of infinity in an increasing order? It could be I, I suggested that maybe it's the number of atoms in the universe, but they, in some of the texts that I've been reading, they're saying that this has got to do with the names of divinities because every particle has a consciousness, is a living being. So I believe that this is a tradition that, at, that is acknowledging the upper limits of human, of human comprehension. It's in a form, what we're doing is we're questing for the upper limits of knowing who we are. That's why by studying mathematics, which is a language of shape and patterns, it's, it's a language of the universe, we're learning to find our place and connection from the earth, the terrestrial, to the infinity of the celestial.